Hey, you beautiful people. I hope everybody is doing good today and having a wonderful, blessed time. Um, today, we get a look at Zechariah chapter 8. All right, guys. Uh, I'm sorry I couldn't get to a new video yesterday. I had to go to the doctor to or to the hospital to get some an annual checkup on my liver and kidneys from all the years of drug addiction, and I had hep C, and finally was able to get that gone and stuff, and so this is part of my yearly checkup. I think everything went okay. It just took forever when I was at the hospital, and um, anyways, thank you guys for your prayers and everything. I love you all so much, so yeah, today... Zechariah 8, which if you watch the video on 7, 7 is sort of the setup or, or, or the, the call to chapter 8's answer, and I think it's pretty good, so let's pray, we'll read this, see what I got to share with you, and hopefully it enables some growth in you, just like hopefully it does in me, um, let's do this guys. Heavenly Father, we just want to come before you today, Lord, and profess our utter gratitude, Lord, for waking us up, for giving us a fire in our belly for you, Lord, for giving us your word that we could have your word in our hand, Lord, to be able to, to get to know you better, to get to know ourselves better, to better understand our history as a people, to better understand and learn from and identify with our brothers and sisters in Christ and in faith throughout the millennia, Lord. Help us to continue to glorify you, Father God, with our, with our, our not only our actions, Lord, but our thought life, our heart life, that which is within. Father God, I would ask that this video be able to be a nourishment to your flock and that it would somehow, any way possible, catch the attention of anyone out there like I was, Lord, lost to sin, lost to self, being misled by the flesh and addictions and, and a darkened and deceitful heart, being misled by, by, by all the lies that the devil and the secular world put out there and, and, and just this love of self, this adulation of self, and this feeding of the flesh and that which feels good. Help us to present your gospel as, as, the, as the glorious alternative to that shameful way of living and existing. Help our praise and our worship, Lord, to not just be with our mouths and to not just be when we're singing, but with everything that we say, think, and do, Lord. Help us to lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ. Help us to speak truth to power and truth to sin, Lord. Help us to declare the gospel into the most darkened and furthest and, and, and most fallen corners of the earth. I would pray for a hedge of protection around the lives and a blood covering over the hearts and over the minds of children and the infirm and anyone unable to do so for themselves, Lord. Instill within us that spirit, Lord, to continue to have 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 fight within us, Lord, that we may that we may be active and certain in our declaration of the gospel, that we may take part in the Great Commission and, and see it with the with the sort of reverence we should for what it is that you would trust us with declaring your word. That, that though we were once broken, we would now be purposed for that which is divine and holy and right and wonderful and lovely. Help us to answer that call to excellence, Father God. Guide us, lead us, and direct us today. And I pray, we pray, all of this in the mighty, powerful, righteous, and loving name of your Son and our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, guys. Somebody out there say amen if he if he came to you in your need. Say amen if, if, if you were lost and broken and sinful and, and now you're not. Say amen if, if, if the foot of the cross is the most beautiful place you've ever found yourself.
All right, guys. Chapter 8 of Zechariah. First off, thank you guys so much for letting me share with y'all. The little subheading on mine is Jerusalem, Holy City of the Future. Chapter 8, verse 1, guys. Let's go. Again, the word of the Lord of hosts came, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor I am zealous for her. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Old men and old women shall again set in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. Thus says the Lord of hosts. If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, will it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Thus says the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the land of the east and from the land of the west. I will bring them back and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Oh, somebody say amen. Thus says the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong, you who have been hearing in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets who spoke in the day the foundation was laid for the house of the Lord of hosts that the temple might be built. For before these days, there were no wages for man nor any hire for beast. There was no peace from the enemy for whoever went out or came in. For I set all men and everyone against his neighbor. But now... I will not treat the remnant of this people as in the former days, says the Lord of hosts. For the seed shall be prosperous, the vine shall give its fruit, the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these, and it shall come to pass that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear, let your hands be strong, for thus says the Lord of hosts. Just as I determined to punish you, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, says the Lord of hosts, and I would not relent, so again in these days, I am determined to do good to Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. Do not fear. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth, justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor. And do not love a false oath for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feast for the house of Judah. Therefore love truth and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts. Peoples, shall yet come inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Yes, many peoples and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, 
In those days, ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, Let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. Somebody say amen, guys. The, 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 the way that this speaks to the Great Commission, the way that this speaks to being an evangelical, the way that this speaks to the later missions and ministries of Paul and Peter and guys like that is so powerful because this is what we want when we answer that call, when we take part in the Great Commission, when we say, God, I know you demand excellence of me and I want to give you that. I want to make the gospel appear as spotless and bright and, and, and inviting and needed as it could possibly be. That way, that way we get to that day when even the most furthest corner, the most furthest island nation that's as far away from Jerusalem as possible, when even Ten of their men shall make their way to Jerusalem to say, I give my all to the God of the Jews. I give myself and my all to the God of the Gentiles. I give myself and my all and my people's all to the one true and living God, creator of the heavens and the earth. Guys, let's jump back here to the beginning. Um, man, there's some beautiful stuff in here. You'll notice there's this, um, real quick, this is kind of on a side note. You'll notice throughout here a couple times it's talking about hands. Uh, about let, let, Verse 13 talks about let your hands be strong. Um, verse 9 talks about, I believe, let your hands be strong. You know, and, and it's this, if you think about it, as far as a part of your body that physically interacts with all the rest of the world, probably no part more physically interacts with the world than your hands you know for us today we're always wearing shoes almost so so you know our bare feet aren't really coming but our hands our hands come in contact our hands our hands hug brothers and sisters they they are lifted up and praise and worship they they reach out and they grab doors and they open them and they walk into places to be able to profess the word of god they, 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 they hold Bibles and book bags and they carry them into the furthest and darkest corners of this world into places like North Korea and China and places in the Middle East where Christianity can still get you killed. Those hands interact and that's what it's talking about, having those godly hands. All right, guys. So first off, welcome you most beautiful and kind souls if you are new. I'm Rex, and I am so pleased to have you join me in our pursuit of God's Word. I mean, how blessed are we to pursue our walk of faith, all the while aided by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, all the while aided by the tangible, physical, handheld divinity that we have. Today, guys, we push ahead with our dive into Zechariah, and in particular, we are blessed to receive our daily bread to fill our spiritual plates with this eighth chapter. Now, recall that along with chapter seven, this comprises the book's middle section, wherein it gives voice to the duties, the responsibilities, the, um, in short, what it focuses on is if you're God's people, this is what's expected. We should view chapter seven as the as the setup to this beautiful chapter 8 that in its entirety reveals God Almighty's um, declarative profession of divine blessings promised to Jerusalem. If you watch often, you'll know that I touch fairly frequently on how repetition in Scripture speaks volumes. Well, chapter 8 is heavy with God's guardianship, overtones of God's guardianship over, Ju over Judah, and no term, no phrase, no title denotes or declares this capable devotion more than the title Lord of Hosts with its militaristic and powerful origins. Zechariah employs the title Lord of Hosts, meaning Lord of the divine and angelic armies and forces, he uses that title 36 times over the course of the book's 14 chapters, which is interesting. But what's even cooler is that here in chapter 8, 
He uses it 15 times. He references it 15 times that who we are in this covenant relationship with, who, who we are loved by, who we are bound to, who we are, who we are listened to by is the Lord of hosts, the one who created all and is over all. For the protection of his children, God can and will call on divine legions. And you, today, right here, right now, please know that this is no less so today than it was millennia past. Never forget, never diminish the truth that all of us, all that we are, all that we think, do, and, and, and are for all time is all before God at once and endlessly. And yet still, he sent his son. He sent the Messiah. He sent that blameless, spotless Passover lamb. He sent us our Savior to die for us, to purchase us at a most high price so that we could be family, so that we could accept and give ourselves over to his gentle leadings and his glorious intentions for each and every one of our lives. Guys, the imagery painted in chapter 8 is that of God's kingdom at its at its prime state, at its, at its peak. The pinnacle of abundance and blessings for God's children. Now, there are definite shades of Isaiah's chapter 65 and 66 in what we are reading here today. They both have this sort of focus on this post-exilic hope of, of a Lord who is still fully set to bless the Jews. In time, I'm reminded that in time, what is now only in part will in time be in full. What was initiated or kicked off in that manger in Bethlehem and today still flows onward will only blossom to its to its fullest at the time that there is a ushering in of a new heaven and a new earth. All right, guys, let's look at verse two. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I am zealous for Zion with great zeal, with great fervor, I am zealous for her. So, so you know, he's saying, this is my people, this is my children, this is the nation that I have chose. And y'all, he's saying, I am lime green jello over them. Not like, not like the world is jealous. This is a divine jealousy, zeal, jealousy. So here the root word that is translated in the New King James as zeal and in some other Bibles as jealousy, they truly are interchangeable. And to be clear, this jealousy, this zeal is over his people. It's, it's for his people. It's not of them. Unlike, unlike humanity who is so often jealous of one another and jealous of people having things, God's zeal, God's jealousy is for our benefit. It's, it's jealousy over us. It's a parent's jealousy, but at turn to a maximum potential. Such zeal is rooted in his love and devoted commitment to them. And as such, this is met with a righteous expectation that demands uh, of his children, of his family, of the elect, a, a soul deep fealty and a honest, all encompassing loyalty to him and his will. Let's look at verse three, guys. Thus says the Lord, I will return to Zion and dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. Jerusalem shall be called the city of truth, the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. And so now, guys, when I read this here, first off, I can't help but feel that in a very lovely sense, Zedekiah or Zechariah's um Literary efforts here, they sort of preempt or, or tap into the same spirit of Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech as titles and phrases like City of a Truth shows how all of this is taking place in a reality where true and faithful keeping of God's word and God's will was a sad 
rarity in Israel, even in Zechariah's time. But yet there's this hope. It's Zechariah is speaking with a spirit of hope that only God can equip us with. Our prophet, he's looking, he's looking hopefully ahead to a time where God's children will walk, where God's children will talk and will treat and interact in a way with each other that is fully reflective of God's perfect character. All right, guys, let's look at verses 4 and 5. Thus says the Lord of hosts, old men and old women shall again set in the streets of Jerusalem, each one with his staff in his hand because of great age. The streets of the city shall be full of boys and girls playing in its streets. So guys, here we have a quick look at how all-encompassing God's blessings can be. The blessings of a long life to grow nearer to God, and the blessings of a childhood rich with potential lived in a, in, in a state of open shalom or a state of open well-being and peace. All right, guys, let's look at uh, verse 6. Thus says the Lord of hosts, If it is marvelous in the eyes of the remnant of this people in these days, Will it also be marvelous in my eyes, says the Lord of hosts. Here, the Hebrew, translated as marvelous, in fact denotes that which surpasses the, the strength or the understanding of mankind. And as such, what it alludes to is the divine. Now, I'm sorry to anybody out there that Maybe thought it was possible, but he's not talking about ancient aliens. There, there are no ancient aliens, guys. That's not, that's not the focus here. Also, when we read a verse like verse 6 here, we should understand particularly here that remnant and that, that phrase should be understood to be those who persist in their faithfulness to God amid a societal or cultural disobedience and downfall. Um, let's look at verse 8, guys. Thank you all for letting me share with you. I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Oh, I love that verse, guys, so much. Um, to me, this has always read like a marriage vow, full of such love and potential. Let's read it one more time, guys. I will bring them back, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem. They shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and righteousness. Um, a verse like this, it showcases how profoundly deep and personal this relationship, and, and I'm sorry, let me start over. It showcases this profoundly deep and personal relationship that is the, the very essence that underpins the covenant with Abraham, the, the covenant as it is kept with his lineage, in addition to the new covenant recorded in Jeremiah 31, 33. And in truth, it, it, it's what's behind or what underpins all other covenants and all other covenant produced blessings. All right, guys, let's look at verse 13. And it shall come to pass that just as you were a curse among the nations, O house of Judah and house of Israel, so I will save you and you shall be a blessing. Do not fear, let your hands be strong. So you'll see here he's talking about their name being a curse. You know, we don't, we don't often think about it like this, but... You know, today, like, I hate to even bring it up, but let's look at that awful incident between Will Smith and Chris Rock. You know, now you have people saying, oh, I wish somebody would Will Smith somebody or Will somebody when they're talking about them being slapped. You know, your name, that name becomes synonymous with this awful action, right? Well, the, the same thing can be said here about, about the nation of Israel. Their name had become a curse. Now, 
Before this season of renewal that we're, that we're reading about right now, the nation was rightfully under God's wrath. They had did much to draw. They had violated the covenant in a number of ways. And, and so much so that their very name was used as a curse word. Now, as you likely know, we serve a forgiving God. We serve the God of second chances. We serve the God of transformations and revivals. Okay, and he can do anything with anyone. And while once that name was a curse, he is telling you that now that I am back in your midst, that name will be a blessing. Now that you were back to focusing on me and doing what you should do, now, now, now that things are back to right, your name will be a blessing. There is nothing out of God's hands. There is nothing out of God's scope. All right, guys, let's look now at verses 16 through 23. I got a couple things I want to share, and this is what we are going to um, close out with today. All right? So again, thank you guys so much for letting me share with you. Let's read these last verses here. 16 to 23. All right. These are the things you shall do. Speak each man the truth to his neighbor. Give judgment in your gates for truth justice, and peace. Let none of you think evil in your heart against your neighbor, and do not love a false oath, for all these are things that I hate, says the Lord. Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feast. For the house of Judah, therefore, love truth and peace. Thus says the Lord of hosts, People shall yet come, inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us continue to go and pray before the Lord and seek the Lord of hosts. I myself will go also. Yes, many people and strong nations shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem and to pray before the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, in those days, ten men from every language of the nations shall grasp the sleeve of a Jewish man, saying, let us go with you, for we have heard that God is with you. And as we know, the very name, Emmanuel, God is with us. Um, so if you look, let's reread verse 19 in particular. Verse 19 says, Thus said the Lord of hosts, The fast of the fourth month, the fast of the fifth, the fast of the seventh, and the fast of the tenth, shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feast for the house of Judah, therefore love, truth, and peace. Um. So first off, looking to verse 19, this period, this this timing of blessings would see past wounds heal. And in fact, would see a time of fast turn into a time of feast. Here, fast at the fourth and the fifth month looks to Jerusalem's breached wall in um, Zedekiah's day. And Jerusalem's fall in 586 BC, respectively. Now, the seventh month recalls Gadaliah's assassination, and that feast of, or the fast of the tenth month, was rooted in the Nebuchadnezzar led 588 BC siege of Jerusalem. A key takeaway here is that when God's people care for one another, when God's people promote, demand, and uphold justice, they experience such divine favor, such divine blessing, such a divine shine is put upon them that even onlooking Gentiles would see this and want to get in on that action. That This really speaks to, even today, how we are always to present the gospel in a way that is excellent and inviting and makes it so that others see that and go, I want that. That person over there, you know, maybe their life's not perfect, but they experience hardships, they experience blessings, and this is how they react to it. They don't just lose their minds. They don't just go off the rails. They do this or that, and I want that. All right, guys. Hey, if you're not subscribed, smash the subscribe button. I drop a new video like this six days a week, and I promise 
Father God tells us that he has no greater joy than to know that his children walk in the truth. Now you'll notice the careful wording of that. He doesn't say that he only that what makes him happy is for his children to know the truth, to read the truth, to own a copy of the truth, to own a really nice copy of the truth. No, no, no. He says that his children walk in the truth. He also tells us that he wants doers of the word, not just hearers, further driving home that point that with scripture, you know, reading it is the first step, but it is definitely not the only step, and it's certainly not the last step. We read it, we think about it, we pray about it, we reread it, we pull these things out, and we apply them practically to our own lives, to our own individual walk of faith. Remember that every day we are to pick up our cross to follow Christ, to crucify our flesh, to, to continue to choose our devotion to him. Um, let's see, hit the bell if you want notified every time I drop a new video. Give this one a thumbs up if you liked it. Share it if you loved it. Or even if you just want to do me the favor. Um, see, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, if you have any video ideas, guys, I would love to hear it in the comments. But even more than that, I would love to hear God is glorified when you tell, and I promise other people would love to hear your witness, your testimony, your story about what led up to you making your way to the foot of the cross and what has happened since then. And I promise you, if you're saved, you have a story, you have a witness, you have a testimony. And it is no less impressive than anyone else's. And it may in fact be that your very one, your very story, may be the one thing that some other poor lost sinner out there needs to hear, or maybe some backsliding Christian needs to hear to pull them back to the foot of the cross, to bring them to their moment and their time to be able to repent and lay claim to that salvation. Um... Guys, I love you so much. Father God loves you even more. Now do me a favor. Go out there and have a blessed and beautiful day. And let somebody you see today know that Jesus loves them. I promise they need to hear it. You need to get used to saying it. And just so you're like, maybe, I don't know. That sounds a little weird. Let me try it out for you. I'll give you one and then you give it to somebody else. Oh, hey, how you doing today? I mean, yeah, I'm good. Feeling blessed. God is good. Am I right? I mean, he definitely loves you. Look at this world and all that he gives us, right? And this is even after we've messed up. Huh? All right, guys, I love you. God bless.